Well, for more on the AI momentum and what it means for the big tech and the digital ad space, let's bring in Yusuf Scully. He is the head of Internet and Media Equity Research at Truist Global. Um, Yusuf, you just put out a note earlier this week breaking down the tech names you see as early winners in the AI race, as well as the companies most at risk. First, I just want to get your take on this sort of notion that's driving this entire trade, and that is that there is a massive spend that we're just on the precipice of. Can you... Walk us through how valid you think that is, because in theory, all these companies have been spending on AI in one shape or another for years and years and years. And it seems like now there's a narrative that that spend will be step function higher than what we've seen in the past. What's your take? All right. So I think you hit on the really important point. So as several of your guests have said, you know, the large caps or the mega caps have all done really well this year. And that, that was an anticipation of that that they, you know, they're the key players, the hyperscalers, the infrastructure builders for AI, and that's completely true. What I think the street is yet to, uh, or trying to wrestle with is OPEX and CAPEX from 2022 to 2023 has actually, have been going down. And the assumption, if you look at, you know, uh, consensus for 23 and 24 and 25, the assumption is that we basically kind of stay relatively flat to maybe go up a little bit. Um, I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case because of all of these investments that now need to be um, reflected with all these guys building, again, the infrastructure. I think they've all cut down on real estate. They've all cut down on kind of pet projects, but AI is really the area where they need to spend. And, you know, and I don't think it was, it's necessarily baked into street estimates. And I think that's the disconnect at this point. How do you, how do you put into your model the benefit from AI? And I'm wondering because comp different companies, Microsoft had, was very specific, I thought, on its earnings call in terms of outlining what they were projecting would be the added benefit when it came to uh, uh, cloud services, et cetera. Very specific in terms of how they thought the, about the benefit. Alphabet, though, seemed a little bit more amorphous, and we know that Alphabet has a lot of AI in it. But how do you think about that in terms of your model and financials? Well, so I think for the cloud guys, it's probably the easiest because we know that as um, these workflows start, you know, materializing, and everybody tries to train their own, you know, AI on their own proprietary data there's just going to be a lot of compute power that's going to be required. And there are only three players there, right? Which, you know, but then there is a second derivative there and that's companies that should, or that are going to be leveraging AI for revenue acceleration. And those are in my mind, company like Uber company, like Wayfair, uh, trade desk, uh, DoorDash, et cetera. Um, and that will probably start happening in 2024. It's not going to happen this year. And then, and this is probably true of virtually the entire co coverage of uh, um, our, our cover universe, and that's companies that are going to leverage AI for cost reduction, right? Um, and those are companies that are going to be either leveraging, leveraging AI to try to lower customer support or um, um, uh, engineering and, and, and uh, you know, kind of programming, et cetera. And, it's really hard to put numbers around these because we've ran uh, a number of surveys with, with clients or with companies we cover. And the feedback is we're still in the early stages of trying to figure it out. So we don't really know. And that's why the street hasn't really put pen to paper to try to change their numbers, at least on the revenue acceleration and on the cost reduction yet. But the easiest really should be the, the hyperscalers and the infrastructure builders as they benefit from just the increase in, um, in workflow. Last quick question, Yusuf. When you talk about a company like a Wayfair, how is AI going? It feels almost like back when, when people are using the internet for e-commerce and saying it's an e-commerce company now um, because it uses e-commerce. I mean, is Wayfair going to sell that many more rugs and sofas because of AI? I mean, how, how does that actually work because it seems like every company will be able to benefit from AI. And so how do you differentiate Wayfair as opposed to some other company? Well, so the way I look at it is any company that relies on search to try to, you know, kind of deliver the right product to the right person at the right time is going to be, you know, leveraging 
uh, you know, the, the tremendous amount of data they already have on their customers or the third party data they're buying and they're trying to create lookalike audiences. So the reason Wayfair and Etsy, DoorDash and Uber are gonna benefit is because they're gonna, one, improve their, 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 their kind of uh, uh, marketing to drive higher um, customer uh, uh, acquisition. And that, those customers should one, come in at a cheaper COCA or cost, cost customer acquisition and stick around late, um, for longer. 